So today, I'm going to be talking um, and sharing with you an experience that I had this past week. And the title of the message today is, With God, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. Amen. This past week, I had one of the most bestest, and I'm going to say bestest, visits with Shorty and Velma. Uh, Pastor Mike were able we were able to go over there to see them. And it, I don't even know how to explain it, but Velma was sitting there, their new place, there's a window that overlooks where you can park. There's the garage there and stuff. Well, when we had first went in there, we didn't know quite where to go, so unbeknownst to us when I made the turn thinking that was a parking lot it was actually outside their um, living room window so I turned around and went back because you have to walk into the front of the building to get to their apartment so when we did that I guess Velma was sitting on the couch looking out the window and she thought it was us but she wasn't for sure and so we, when we got in there, um, she was so excited to see us. She said, you know, I thought that was you. I thought that was your car, but I wasn't for sure. But I was hoping. She was just too excited to see us. And that, I mean, that just, wow. You know, I felt so honored that she thought so much of us to be that excited. Sitting on, literally, on the edge of her couch waiting for us to come over. So that was a blessing. And then, oh my goodness, Shorty. You know, he's, he's not doing well health-wise, but you really couldn't tell because he had a glow about him and he was sharing so many things that he had gotten through with his own life. Now, what I'm sharing with you today is just my experience. It's not my story, but just to have been a witness to what he shared with us that day. So one of the things he spoke to us about was his childhood and growing up. He lost his mother when he was six years old and then his dad remarried and not to a very good person either. And he had spoken about how she would have him go out and get you know the switches uh, you know, for him to get his, his spankings, which I guess was pretty much every day, you know, according to him. He didn't get in great detail about it. But the great thing about him sharing that was that he was sharing that despite those problems that he had with his stepmother, he never disrespected her. He did what he was told by her. But Come the age of 17, he said that was enough for him. So I guess he had taken their car out and came back with a flat tire, and she told him to go get the switches. And he said, I told her, I'll go get two for you, but I'm going to bring back six for me, for you. So that ended that right there. And it wasn't until later on, you know, that they did reconcile. That was the great... Yes, amen. That was the great story about that. Because Shorty never held that in his, against her in his heart. But his son, Ross, told us that later in life that woman would just cry every time she saw him because she had felt so bad for what she had done to him in his childhood. So a story of, of reconciliation, right? When we come from a childhood that maybe wasn't the best childhood, I know that my dad had his issues, my mom had her issues. You know, again, none of us have, have a, a guidebook when we become parents, right? And some of us became parents at a very young age. And my hope is that mistakes that I've made with my kids, that at some point we can all be reconciled in our relationship with each other because it's so important. And as Shorty was, he, he also told some funny stories. I can't remember all of them. Um, 
but he had us laughing. He was peaceful. That's what I noticed with him. He was extremely peaceful. He's not on no medication to make him feel that way. That's God in him. Amen. That is Christ in yeah. him. Amen. He knows that his time here is shortened, that he may not have much time left here. But one thing for sure, he's content. He said, the Lord leaves me here, I'm fine. If he takes me, I'm fine with that too. Oh, how I hope I am that way when it comes my time. He has no qualms about anything. He's just, and then, mm, mm, mm. Thelma was sharing with us about her difficulty from moving from the house that they've lived in for, gosh, if their kids grew up there, I would say they had to been there over 50 years or so. I'm not sure how long they've lived in that home. But she's having much difficulty with that, adjusting to a new place. When you're comfortable in your own home, it's hard to get used to something else, isn't it? So we all can understand that. And she teared up, you know, as she was talking. And then she said, you know, I tell myself that when I'm getting really down, that Pastor Mike, I know you've been praying for me because I could feel the prayer. So I said, he must be praying for me right now. So she's working through her emotions and, you know, of, of trying to adjust, plus knowing that her husband, you know, is not doing well either. Those two are amazing people is all I can say. They're just amazing. So as she was getting teared up in that and, you know, Shorty let her talk. And then he told her, he beckoned her to come here. Because, you know, she can't, she has a hard time hearing. <laughs> so she tells me, I'm sorry that I'm crying. I cry. He's, so Shorty said to her, well, what don't you cry about? <laughs> then she's like, what did you say? <laughs> so he said her aloud, what don't you cry about? And it was so cute, and he had a smile on his face. But then he beckoned her to come here to him. And he said to me and Pastor Mike, I wrote a love song for her, and I'm going to sing it for her. Now, I can't remember it word for word, but it has something to do with that he had a box of candies, and he took a bite out of each one, <laughs> and he gave it to her. <laughs> something about... Um, so we can have some fun or something like that, you know, try and make her laugh. She just blushed like a little schoolgirl when he was singing it to her. Like I said, I don't remember words for her, but it was somewhere along those lines. I'm just, I sat there all the time going, I, I felt so blessed to be able to witness their life. Even though we've known, I, I was telling Pastor Mike, do you know that we've known them for 19 years now, <laughs> ourselves? But to, to be able to be there to share in their memories and for them to feel comfortable enough to share it. And I do hope, and, and I'm gonna ask them, but I would really love to get Shorty uh, to share and, and I record it, whether he's on the video or, or just once, you know, just to have it recorded. I think that would be so awesome. Cause not only did he talk about, you know, his, his childhood and that, he talked about you know, his raising of his kids. He talked about uh, when he served in the armed forces and, and the ones that he had bunked with and how they he was just a scrawny little kid and they fattened him up because the cook would give him, what was it, pancakes? Yeah, pancakes. But give him stacks and stacks of pancakes because they told him he needed, you know, to thicken up and, you know, just just amazing. So that brings me and, and had me thinking of, about them. And it brought me to the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Because this is God's promise to us. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And one thing with, with Shorty and also Velma is that you could tell that he lived the commandments. He, I don't think he ever met a bad person or would think bad about anyone. He just has that, that, um, that characteristic of Jesus that we kind of all need 
more so than maybe what we do today because there's so many things going on in the world and people just have become very hateful, yeah. you know? So what should we look for in our Christian walk with the Lord when we age? And see, I ask myself this question too because, yes, I did pass the half-century mark, albeit three years ago, but I still passed it nonetheless. One is that he will never leave us or forsake us. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes when we're going through things, we think that that the Lord's not with us because maybe things didn't turn out the way we thought they should have turned out. And we might have prayed about it and, and it didn't come to pass the way, again, that we thought it should. But just like the song that we sang, that when we see the victory, that things that the enemy meant for evil, he turns it for good. And how awesome was Chase giving an amen on that? They just, oh my gosh. Because yep. we look at Chase for that same purpose. That Satan tried to do something evil with Chase and look at him today. A blessing. Amen. Yep. And he turned Chase for good. That's for sure. In Isaiah 46, 4, which I have that scripture on the screen. And this is another promise of the Lord's. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to the whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. Amen. Yep. Isn't that an awesome scripture? And that's exactly what God's doing with Shorty right now. He's carrying him. He's carrying him. Yep, he and then he's going to deliver him when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. God will supply our needs. And we all know the scripture, Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So he will carry us. And God can and will use us even when we are old. Because guess what? God still uses Shorty at 98 years old. God still uses Nora at 99 years old. Yeah. God still uses Velma at 95 years old. God still using you, Pastor, Pastor Mike, at 71 years old. And I won't say anybody else's age because some of you, I don't know your ages. But he's using you too. And Chase God is using you as young as you are. Yep. Psalm 20 or 92, Psalm 92, verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. We're not talking about weight gain there. Just an analogy. <laughs> they shall bring fruit, forth fruit in old age. Meaning all of those things that Christ brought to their lives that is that is expounding, that it, it's expanding. And they'll be fat and flourishing. Meaning that whatever they share with you, whatever you witness and experience with them, the ones that know Jesus Christ, those things, you'll see that much more in them. The waistline, too. Yeah, and their waistline. <laughs> and guess what? What Moses could not do at age 40, God called him at age 80, and look what he did. Hmm. Well, can you imagine being called at age 80? And I've got to fly up here to this to stay. Abraham was 99 years old when God made his covenant with him. When God made his promise to, to Abraham that his descendants would be more than, than the grains of sand on the sea. He was 99 years old when God used him for that. And then we can go all the way back to Samuel who was 12 years old when God called him. So it doesn't matter what age we are. There's a king named Josiah. He was only eight years old when he took the throne. And he was for God. 
All of the original first disciples of Jesus, save for Peter, and this is really going to blow your mind, were between 15 and 20 years old. No, that cannot be. We see in the movies, they got beards, they got canes. No. <laughs> nope. That's Hollywood for you. You got to make it interesting. No, they were only 15 to 20 years old. How do we know that? Well, I did a little research on it. Is that culture and clues in the scripture tell us their approximate ages. Not that that's like their exact age, but they had to be between 15 and 20. One of the reasons why is that the Jews had to be married between the ages of 15 and 20. And usually at the age of 15, you were done with school. You know, here in the United States, we're not done with school till the age of 17, 18, as far as high school. Then what would happen is they would have to go, if they were rich or they were wealthy, their families, they were able to go to um, a Jewish school where, I forget how they call it, Rab I can't pronounce it right, Rabinic, Rabinic, <laughs> I'm sorry, schooling. Anyway, it, it was a higher schooling after they would finish regular school, schooling, which involved them reading the Torah and knowing the laws of that. So most of them would have a baseline of what they knew uh, when Jesus was coming about, right? So when Jesus was calling them, Andrew and, and, and Peter and all of them, they were of young age. So they knew something about Jesus to want to follow him. So now they have their own teacher. They weren't wealthy, they were fishermen, right? So because of their culture, the only one that was married that we know for sure was Peter because his wife is mentioned in the scripture. But the rest of them, they're pretty sure that they weren't married because they're not even documented anywhere in the um, old ancient uh, Jewish text. So when I read that, and I was figuring out, like, I wonder how old the disciples were. Wow. After seeing all the movies, I'm really disappointed because here I'm expecting that they're going to be as old as me or, you know, a little bit older. But Jesus was only 33 when he started his ministry. So he had to be a little bit older than them. And they believe P uh, Peter was around the same age, but he might have been, you know, two or three years older than them. So he was still a young man himself. And then in Psalms 103, verse 5, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? So God can continue to restore us. He can continue to energize us no matter what our age. In Ruth chapter 4, verse 15, And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine own age. Wow, what a promise there. A restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine own age. Wow. So how can all this happen? Well, first and most important, we need to keep serving God and be positive about it. Knowing our scripture, knowing what Jesus said, knowing what the promises are of God for each of us, abiding in him and he in us. And this is God's plan for us. And we all know this scripture too, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So I do hope my father Amen. will let the river of my life go flowing fully until the finish. Because I don't want it to end up in the swamp. Because remember, we are not getting older, but better. Better because we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. So be encouraged. With God... Your age ain't nothing but a number. All right, Pastor Mike.
for the message. Hopefully that will encourage.